Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be painting up the Shrine Luminor from the Luminith Realm Lords. So long as it's not the infantry, uh, the Luminith Realm Lords have a pretty good model line. Now we're going to start off with assembly by taking the things off the sprues. Uh, when it comes to it, there's going to be a bunch of huge mold lines on the rocks, so a good uh, file can easily get rid of that. And when we're coming to assembly, what we're going to do is we're going to assemble everything except we're not going to glue the uh, stone archway or the little pond on the bottom together. Everything else is going to be assembled, including the trees. You especially want to assemble the trees because they're very they're very weird in how they fit onto it. It's very abstract, so it took me a long time of just jamming them onto the rocks that they're supposed to be around to actually find their fit. So basically the whole model is into three pieces. Now, unfortunately, the model has these really huge gaps in the plastic that you have to fill in along the rocks. It's very noticeable. It's a little sad that the model didn't make it so that uh, you could, uh, that the, you would never see it. The rocks would just hover over the mold lines and stuff. They could have designed it a bit differently, but, well, here we are. So with green stuff, I try to fill it in, but it'll take too long. It, there's a lot. There is a ton of these huge gaps all the ring around, so I end up dropping the green stuff and stop bothering with it because it takes too long to work with and it's just not good enough. Then I switch to Liquitex Modeling Putty and I try to fill it in that way. I do around two fillings with this and try to sand the excess off. In the end, it, it only helped a little. And then we're going to prime it with Bright Touch General Purpose Gray Car Primer. I use Car Primer because it has a very strong grip. And here are the models. It, we're going to start off with the what I believe is the easiest to paint. However, after doing this project, I realized I painted this model in the wrong order, and I'll get into that later. So I want to try to stick to the recommended box colors that Games Workshop recommends as best as possible. So with Eschen Grey, Nuln Oil, Dawnstone, and Administrative Grey. This isn't all what they recommend, but I don't have all the paints that they recommend, so as best as I can. So we're going to paint all the stones Eschen Grey all around the base platform and the stones on the little pond. Then we will take Nuln Oil and we're going to apply this all over. Now normally I personally would take Eschen Grey and immediately dry brush after a wash the color that was underneath it for a smoother transition, but I'm going to go for a higher contrast with the stones. So I skip redoing Eschen Grey as a dry brush and I go straight to Dawnstone. And then I do a medium light air dry brushing, like covering 50 to 40% of it all over the stones that we painted. Now with Strock and Green, Lamian Medium, Gullum and Flesh, and Contrast Medium, we're going to add some flavor to the rocks. I'm going to start off with Gullum and Flesh, mix one to one with Contrast Medium to lighten it a bit, and I'm going to apply it to a lot of the rocks that are near the water, or the inner cracks and stuff to show like some weathering, some dark wetness around the area. And then I'm going to take Strock and Green and mix it with Lamian Medium until the Strock and Green becomes sort of a wash. And I'm just going to paint straight lines with it in certain places and along the rocks that are next to the water to make it look like, you know, like you see mold uh, showing up on rocks that are next to rivers and stuff. This is basically what I'm doing. Now I'm adding a little bit extra flavor and color to these rocks. Now with Carrick Stone, Thunderhawk Blue, Administrative Gray, and Gray Seer, and with some Lamian Medium at points, we're going to paint the archway. One note I would recommend now that I've done this, the archway should have been painted last. Now, we're going to paint all the stone of the archway with Carrick Stone. Don't forget that there is some that is on the main uh, body base. And then once that's done, we're going to create a wash with Thunderhawk Blue and Lamian Medium. A mix of one part uh, Thunderhawk Blue to around six parts Lamian Medium and with a little bit of water. And we're basically going to coat the entire archway in this. Everything that was painted with Carrick Stone, we're painting it again with Thunderhawk Blue, this wash mix we made.
We then go and do a second coat of the Thunderhawk Blue and Lamin Medium Mix, but we're going to focus heavily on more specific areas where the shadow is the most, so we want some areas to be more darker. The bottom part where these little leaves are, these crenellation thingies, uh, symbols on it, the, the little egg things on the side, we want to make sure they're surrounded by a good entrenchment of this color, but not like spilling over. We're then going to go back with Carrick Stone and we are going to heavily dry brush everything all over. And then we're going to take Administrative Gray, and then we're going to dry brush the... How do I put it? Uh, well, the uh, edges of all the stones, the egg-like shaped things, the symbols and filigree on the main body and stuff. Focusing on the edges and the tips of the leaves on the bottom. We then take the administrative gray and with a brush we just apply it on the edges of all the stone in certain places where we want a fine strong line, a thick line. And now with Grace here, we take a very fine brush and we apply it on very thin lines in very select places. Uh, your choice, but basically where the light would hit. We don't want it to completely cover up what we've done before. We also do it on all the little eggs, uh, the edges, uh, the little filigree thingies. We apply it on small portions of the edges, like the little, I don't know how to describe it, but small little spikes that are in the filigree that's not connected to each other. Apply it there to make it a little more eye-catching to make certain parts of it pop out. And it looks really good. Nice. Now moving on. With Thunderhawk Blue, Baharat Blue, both one gray and white scar, we're going to paint the water. I wanted to try to get as close to the box art as I could, but in a sad twist of fate, the GW did not have the paints that I needed, which was a Temple Guard Blue, I believe. So I had to make do with Thunderhawk. So I start off with a layer of Thunderhawk Blue all over on all the water. I quickly decide before I continue to go back to my Strachan Green and uh, Lamian Medium Wash thingy that I made and to apply to the rocks to add more flavor to here. This was a bad idea. I should have done this at the very end of the project, or the end of the non-metallic parts of the project. So I go with a one-to-one -one mix of Thunderhawk Blue and Baharat Blue and then I... Well... I've never really worked with blues before, and it just doesn't seem to really transition well like some browns. A lot of browns do. And so it really just looked terrible in the end. Like, it was too striking, and eh, in the end it was rather subpar. And then I tried pure Baharoth blue, but that just did not work. And, it, and the water looked just bad. It didn't have a good transition from dark to light.
All right, that looked ugly. So this is really my first time working with water, so I decide to restart. I go back to Thunderhawk Blue and recover everything. Then I do one-to-one -one with Thunderhawk Blue and whatchamacallit, Barahoroth Blue, but this time I airbrush it, and I'm very careful. I try to avoid all the rocks as best I can, and this blends it much better. You have to have the right PSI or this is going to come out grainy. And then I go to straight Barahoroth Blue, and then I apply it all over the waterfall falling down and stuff, and I also apply it onto the puddle up top to blend it better. The stuff closer to the shrine is darker, the stuff closer to the waterfall is lighter. And then I go to Ulthwan Grey mixed in, and then I airbrush that around. Uh, use your judgment on it, and when it came to the giant waterfalls, I basically placed the airbrush like right next to it, and so that it was like almost at a 90 degree angle, and I sprayed down, and it made good on the water frothing and you can still see some of the dark in there. I then take white scar white and then I dry brush it all along the waterfalls. And this actually works pretty well, it picks out the raised areas, so that went well. And then I also add dry brush with the white, uh, the upper puddle thingy, and it well, showed the little waves on there, which was pretty good. Then I made a bonehead mistake and decided to take Baharoth blue water down and I applied it to the top puddle water. That actually detracted. Don't do that. However, applying it into the recesses of the waterfalls made it look much better. I then take white scar white and then apply it to all the, no, these thingies, the froth, yeah, and the little waves up top. And it looks good. However, I didn't have the temple guard blue, so looking back I would have painted this very differently. I'll get into that at the end of the video. Now if we look carefully, we'll notice that the airbrushing kind of ruined the rocks in the surrounding area. They got white or blue sprayed onto them. So we're going to have to adapt. We're going to take Agrax Earthshade, Gulliman Flesh, Strachan Green, and Lamian Medium, and we're going to fix the rocks. We're going to apply Agrax Earthshade to all the rocks that are next to the water. This will help tone it down a bit and get rid of the very bright colors. Then we're going to take Golem and Flesh, water down a little bit with a Lamian Medium 1 to 1, and we're going to use this to apply this into the dark recesses and darken some of the rocks that are close to the water even further. And then we'll take Strock and Green mixed with Lamian Medium until it's like a sort of a wash, and then we're going to apply this around the rocks that are touching the water to appear like mold. Yeah, I should, I've done this step three times already. <laughs> And with Grey Seer and Ulthwan Grey, spoiler alert, I changed my mind painting this. <laughs> I start off with Grey Seer and I paint these stones that are in the center of the model. And I was originally going to dry brush them with Ulthwan Grey, but it just looked bad. So then I went back and took Dawn Stone, and then I just painted the stones in Dawn Stone. And then once that dried, I then took Gracier and I dry brushed all over. But that really didn't look good. So I took Agrax Earthshade, watered it down a little bit, and then I applied it all over the stone to add depth into the recesses. And then I re-dry brushed it with Gracier. And it added some more depth. It looks a little more brown than the box cover, but at least it has some depth. And then with Baneblade Brown, and I skip the Karak Stone part, I paint the dirt. I want a more brighter dirt, so I go with Baneblade Brown as a base. 
but then like the Carrick Stone really didn't fit the cover art a bit, so I swapped it out for XV88, and then I overbrushed XV88 onto the Bane Blade Brown dirt. However, this wasn't still didn't cut it, so I took some Agrax Earthshade and I just applied it all over uh, the dirt. And now with Mornfang Brown and Skeleton Horde Contrast, we're going to paint all the trees that are scattered throughout the model. Now with Mornfang Brown as a base coat, and then we're just going to apply Skeleton Horde Contrast. The idea is we're not going to do anything fancy, uh, we're just going to do something that isn't looking bad, that can blend into the background and add to the overall piece. And then with Strachan Green, Nurgling Green, and Athonian Ath Ath Camo Shade, okay, we're going to paint all the leaves and the weeds. With Strachan Green, we're going to paint all the leaves on the trees. With Nurgling Green, we're going to paint all the weeds, or grass, as some might call it. And then we're going to paint all of them with Ath Athonian Camo Shade. And then once that's done, we're just going to do a simple dry brushing of Nurgling Green onto all of the leaves. And that's it. And now with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, we're going to spray the entire model, even though I'm only showing the little pond on the bottom. And then we're going to take model glue and we're going to apply it into the holes in the pond things so and we're just going to attach it to the uh, waterfalls and stuff, or towards the end. And now with Retributor Armor, Iron Breaker, and Liberator Gold, we're going to paint the metallics. We're going to start off with a base layer of Retributor Armor on all the on the big symbol, as well as the edges of the stairs, as well as the little towers up top. We will then take Liberator Gold and we'll apply this into the center of the symbol. Now it's kind of reverse. Normally, the lighter color should be on the edges. And with the Liberator Gold, we're also going to do the edges of the stairs, as well as uh, the symbols up top on top of the spires. They have like a moon and a sun on each one. And then once that's done, we're going to take a six part Iron Breaker and one part Liberator Gold, which will create this burnished silver color. And we're going to apply it to the like the stone archway has this metallic piece that's in between and we're going to paint that front and back on each side as well as we're going to use this as a final highlight for the edges of the stairs and uh, some parts of the spire and then once that's done we're just going to take iron breaker and we're going to dry brush the uh, main pole parts of the spire And with Elmer School glue gel and some static grass, we're going to apply it at random parts of the dirt, just to add some flavor. And once that is done, we're going to take uh, Liquitex Gloss Varnish and we're just going to apply this all over the water to make it shine. Done and done. Well, I've been looking forward to this kit for a while ever since I saw the model. I mean, it looks cool. It's very distinct, unique, and it's a nice centerpiece to the army. And its rules are pretty good, too. Now, few revisions. Now that I have painted this thing, I realize that I should have done things in a different order. 
I normally plan things by what has the largest mass of one color to paint or what techniques do I plan to use if I'm using airbrushing or dry brushing because that can spill over to nearby areas. So if I was to redo this, I would do the water first with airbrushing. And I would also change some of the ways I painted. So the water, what I would have done is I would have started off with the Barharoth blue or the lighter of the blues. And I would have painted all the water with that first. And then I would have airbrushed the darker color towards the back and towards the center of the pond there. And then I would have airbrushed the light white everywhere. And then I would have done my, uh, then I would have taken the bare hearth blue and reapplied it into the recesses, or a darker blue if I had that, into the recesses. And then I would have just done the dry brushing and stuff. After that, I would have done the stone and the rocks afterwards. It's easier to control the dry brushing than it is airbrushing. And then once that's done, I would have done the trees because sometimes they spilled when I was painting because of the way they're designed. They sometimes end up, when I'm painting them, the brush flicks and spreads some of the paint out. So I had to fix a couple of things. So after the water, the stones, the trees, once that would be done, then I would do the archway and then the stones in the center and then the metallics. And so in that way, it would have been the easiest and fastest way to assemble this without having to go back and fix a few things. Now, as for my rating. The archway turned out really, really good. I was able to do very good with that. That's a solid nine. The water is my first time attempting water, and while it doesn't have the dark blue, I can't fault myself for that because Games Workshop didn't have it when I came in to buy it. So I'm going to say, as a collection of pieces, honestly, the giant ring around the model from the mold line is really irritating me. I'm going to have to say this, this is a solid eight, maybe a nine. But it is a solid, definite 8 in all in all. Yeah, yeah. Could have done some things better. Well, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, an 8. It is a solid 8. Well, anyway, that's it for this. I'm going to move on to the next project, which I actually started already, and I completely forgot about making this video, so this video would have been out a little bit earlier, but I forgot to, to, I forgot to actually put up the video after getting the footage. So... Like the video if you like the video, share it if you want to share it, comment on anything you want to comment, and I'll be out soon. I'm trying to speed up my stuff because so many Games Workshop releases are coming out. So, thank you. Bye.